Oh, no way, a text message. Who's it from? Aw, Jacksepticeye, how sweet. And there's a picture? Wait, that, that that's not how I wrote this gag. Another one? What's going on here? Wait. What the heck? Steph! Steph, are you pranking me? You promised you'd spend time with me, Matt. Me. And only me. Only me. Only me. Only me. Only me, only me, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where it's our goal to systematically prove that everything in your life is secretly terrifying. Over the years, we've made you fear public Wi-Fi, minimum wage jobs, and even the house next door. But today, we're gonna talk about a game that'll make you stop trusting the very computer you're using to watch this video. Unless you're part of the 75% of users who watch this show on a tablet, phone, console, or TV. In which case, um, uh, just, just pretend you're scared too. Ooh, okay? Okay. Looking at its Steam store page, Doki Doki Literature Club seems harmless enough. A cutesy, pastel-tinged dating sim starring four adorable waifus, as the kids say, all of whom you can try your hand at wooing for the low, low price of free. But look a little closer and it quickly becomes clear that this game isn't the fun, light-hearted visual novel that it makes itself out to be. For starters, the top tag on the Steam store page is psychological horror, which makes it seem misclassified. And at the bottom of the game's description, which is a cute little greeting note from the literature Literature Club's president, Monica, you'll find a very stern warning in bold letters. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. And in case you missed that one, the game greets you with that message yet again as you boot it up. One final reminder that this isn't meant for the faint of heart. It seems like a joke, right? But let me assure you, it is no joke. So in that spirit, this is your last chance to stop watching this video before I spoil the heck out of it. It is without exaggeration one of the best written, most surprising game stories of this year, even if it takes about two hours of fairly slow-paced visual novel action before you get to the really good stuff. Play it yourself, you're not gonna regret it, or just watch our highlight playthroughs on GT Live. You'll get the point. Okay, so if you're still here after that and you haven't played the game or watched our GT Live playthrough, which I'm sure is still a lot of you, let me give you a quick rundown. During your first playthrough, Doki Doki Literature Club seems like a normal visual novel with a pretty neat mechanic of composing poems in order to woo the various girls in the club. Your childhood friends Sayori, quiet bookish Yuri, and young aggressive Natsuki. But at the end of your first run, strange things begin happening. It all starts when Sayori succumbs to her depression and commits suicide. Soon after, she's deleted from the story entirely, and you're kicked back to the title screen. But something is clearly not right this time. As you replay the game, the world begins breaking apart as it tries to move forward without Sayori in it. Eventually, you discover that the club's president, Monica, has become self-aware within the game and is manipulating the the game's code, even files on your very computer in a desperate attempt to make you, you the player, love her. When nothing else works, she deletes everything else in the game, leaving just Monica. Just Monica and you in the club room with nothing to do but talk forever. At least until you do what she did to the other characters and delete her character file in order to save everyone else and reach the true ending. Doki Doki Literature Club intentionally leaves a lot dangling for gamers to figure out on their own, but out of all of it, one question has been bugging me non-stop since I finished playing it. What is the story behind Monica? The game presents her as simply being a character in a visual novel who suddenly becomes self-aware, but all of that doesn't quite add up. The way DDLC is designed, the way that Monica manipulates it, and the things that she says in her extended conversation with you all hint that there's something much more sinister going on with her. And that is the theory for today. That's right, dear theorists, the hidden truth of Doki Doki Literature Club is that Monica is from a different game. Monica is Flowey, who also happens to be Porky from Earthbound, who's really the purple guy from FNAF. Sorry, the rest of the theorist team just pulled me aside for a quick intervention.
Apparently I'm banned from making any links between this game and Undertale. Or any game and Undertale. R really, I'm, I'm not allowed to touch Undertale anymore. But in all seriousness, Monica is from a different game. And not just Monica either. Doki Doki has a lot more to it than first meets the eye, even once you make it through the main story. Because the ending isn't even the ending. When you restart the game after deleting Monica, Sayori assumes the role of club president now, and things are pretty normal until the end of the first day when you get perhaps the biggest twist of them all, Sayori now is self-aware, expressing the exact same desire to hoard you to herself that Monica did. So there's gotta be something that at least Monica and Sayori have in common, and possibly the other girls as well that's making all of this possible. See, there's something about the way Doki Doki Literature Club is designed that doesn't quite add up. Throughout your second playthrough, Monica reveals that she's been manipulating events behind the scenes the whole time, that she's been messing with Yuri, Natsuki, and Sayori's character files by amplifying their worst traits so that you'll like them less and you'll like her more. That's why Yuri goes from being a little bit clingy to being self-harming and obsessive, why Natsuki goes from being flirty mean to just being a plain old jerk, and why Sayori goes from from being mildly depressed to suicidal in the span of a few days. These are all the consequences of Monica haphazardly adjusting their character parameters behind the scenes, but hold on a second. That might seem to make sense on the surface, but if you actually stop and think about it, that's not really how visual novels work at all. Visual novel characters aren't AI-based. Their behavior is determined entirely by what's written in the game's script. The game's dialogue script, not programming script. I can see how that gets confusing. There's simply no need for a character in a dating sim to have complicated behaviors like this. But what if they were created for a more complex game? What if the characters in Doki Doki Literature Club were intended to be used in a different game altogether? One where they would need to have more complex, believable responses to a greater range of player choice? What if their assets were simply repurposed from that game in order to make this dating sim? It's not just speculation. The clues are there, hidden in plain sight in Doki Doki's central mechanic, the poems. Over the course of the first act, you read poems from all the other club members which seems pretty innocent. Sure, reading between the lines, you can start to get hints that Sayori is depressed, that Yuri is prone to self-harm, and that Natsuki is being abused by her father, but it's nothing overt. In the game's second act, you're given three randomly selected special poems out of a possible 11 that makes these hints much more overt. But there's one of these poems in particular that really stands out. A huge block of redacted text with only a few letters left visible, spelling out the question that would be unsettling enough on its own, but if there's one thing Scott Cawthon has trained me to do, it's to run dark images through Photoshop and play around with sliders. If you crank up the exposure on that image all the way to max capacity, suddenly it becomes possible to read the full text, and man, it is weird. A regular heartbeat, heart palpitations, arrhythmia, I search and search, eyes scanning everything I can find on their symptoms. What is this? Shortness of breath? Chest pain? Dizziness? No, this is all wrong. Alyssa's symptoms are nowhere near this simple. I've seen it twice now. The screams of pain, sickeningly pale skin, vomiting blood. There is no other explanation other than that Renier's information was a complete and utter lie. This can't all be coincidence. It's not possible. I don't know how much of this Renier is behind, but I do know this. There is something horribly wrong with this family, and I accepted the invitation to become a part of it. I can hear Alyssa's screams through the walls now. I listen helplessly. Renier said he would be with her shortly. Is he in her room now? Why is she screaming even louder than before? Chilling, right? This creepy letter is literally hidden right in front of your face while you play this game. And what's it all mean? Well, those opening lines make it sound like someone who's trying to identify an illness. A regular heartbeat, heart palpitations, arrhythmia are all possible problems of the heart, so it's not so much this person is making a diagnosis, but rather it's someone trying to read the symptoms he's seeing and figure out what the diagnosis is. It's a clinical assessment, which means that the speaker is a doctor of some kind. And notice the words he uses, their symptoms. It's an illness affecting affecting multiple people, a family, as we see later in the letter. A family that, apparently, you can join, almost like a cult. It's also worth noting that this doctor who's speaking has some degree of detachment from this girl Alyssa, almost like she's a research subject of some kind, possibly part of a human experiment. And when you put all this together, a cult performing experiments on young girls, it starts sounding familiar. We hear about human experiments exactly two times in Doki Doki Literature Club, both times when Yuri describes the plot of the Portrait of Markov, 
the book that she wants to read with us. A book which has a quote, ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. In the first act, Yuri makes it sound relatively innocent enough, quote, basically it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister, but as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison, and while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust, end quote. In the second act, Yuri's personality gets a bit more unhinged, and she gives us a creepier description of what's actually going on on these pages. Quote again, basically it's about this religious camp that's turned into a human experiment prison. All the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to, and then she cuts off. That's a lot of information for a fake book, especially when you compare it to what we learn about Natsuki's favorite manga. And that's because what Yuri tells us about the portrait of Markov isn't just a short snippet of text meant to create the illusion of a bigger story, it is the bigger story here. It's the plot of the horror game that Team Salvato is working on. The game that all four of these characters originate from. And if you think I'm done, oh no, we have just scratched the surface. We can dig deeper to uncover more about this horror game, including its title and release date, as well as how these four girls fit into the overall story, because Team Salvato left a whole ARG's worth of content hidden in Doki Doki's game files. If you thought that the Literature Club was interesting before, simply because it had these cool meta moments and jump scares, well get ready. There's a whole other game here, just resting underneath the surface waiting to be puzzled together, that'll start to make you really question everything you thought you knew about Sayori, Natsuki, Monica, and especially Yuri. But it's all way too much to cover in this one video, so ring the bell to subscribe, help us get closer to the glorified paperweight, so that way you can know when later this week, yeah, should be just a couple days, when part two comes out and things start to get really crazy. I am already excited for this new game, and I think once you see what I and a bunch of Reddit community members have uncovered about it, you're gonna be really excited too. And in the meantime, remember, that's just a Monica. A Monica. Just 